Hi, in this video, we'll be looking at how to find the inverse of an exponential function. We're also going to be looking at how to find the domain of this inverse and look at how to solve a logarithmic function. And this is a practice IB question analysis and approaches. All right, let's jump right in. All right, so this question, we are given f of x is equal to e to the 2x minus 4. And if you're ever asked to find the inverse of a function, you're really asked to find the basically the opposite. So if you switch the x and the y. So we're going to start off by just saying, like calling our f of x y. And just rewriting here. Now we're going to swap the x and the y. And so we get that x is equal to e to the 2y minus 4. So basically everywhere x was, I put y. Everywhere that y was, I put x. Now we can isolate the y. So now the new y will be isolated. So you may recall that the opposite of an exponential function is a ln function. So we're going to take the ln of both sides. So ln, ln, and we end up getting ln x is equal to, and now the whole purpose of taking the ln of both sides here was that we can just now write 2y minus 4. Now, in order to isolate the y, much, much easier, we add 4 to both sides, and we get that 4 plus ln x is equal to 2y, and we need to get that y by itself, so we do the opposite here, divide by 2, we're dividing everything by 2, and we get that 2 plus um, ln x over 2 is equal to y. And I probably should have written half ln x. I think that's easier to look at. Because at this point, we can now use the law of logs. If we recall that half ln x is the same thing as taking that coefficient and moving it to that exponent. So we get that 2 plus ln x to the half, and that's from the law of logs, is equal to y. And so finally, if you look at what you want it to look like here, you look at this right here, if you remember that anything to the power of a half is really just the square root of that thing, then you realize you are actually done. It's ln root x equals y. And that's exactly what we have in the first part of the question. All right, so now the second part of the question is asking you to give the domain of that function. Now a reminder, whenever you have an equation and you're asked for the domain, there are three things that you should always keep in mind that will help you to find that domain. The first fact that you should always remember is zeros are not in the denominator. So let's just say no zero in denominator. That does not help us here because we don't have a fraction, there's no denominator. But it is very, very important to keep that in mind for other questions. Uh, the next fact that you should remember is that uh, you never want to take a square or any even root, so no even root, of a negative number. What do I mean by that? That means that under your square root sign or under any even root sign, that number should always be, um, oh, no negative. Oh, yeah. That number should always be either zero or positive. So that number has to always be zero or positive. So no even root of a negative number it has to be zero or positive. And finally, the third thing that you should remember is you should not have um, non um, non positive. So no non positive logs. What do I mean by that? No non-positive logs. So after a ln, a log, um, any log at all, um, that number should always be positive. Not even zero is allowed. So just positives in front of that ln. All right. With that in mind, right away, we should know the answer here. X has to be positive because of that third point. All right. Now we are ready to actually solve the equation. And so the equation f inverse half ln2. All right, so fortunately, we do have an expression for f inverse, which we found right here. 
So we can go ahead, plug that in, and we get 2 plus ln root x is equal to a half ln 2. Now the goal here is to isolate this x. We want to solve for x, we want to get x alone. So we're going to go ahead, subtract 2 from both sides, and you get that ln root x is equal to a half ln 2 minus 2. All right, so we're closer. Now, using the laws of logs, we can condense this, but we can't yet because this does not have an ln. Now, in order to get an ln in front of this two, we have to just throw that ln in there, but we can't just throw that ln in there. We have to then do the opposite. So remember that the exponential function is the opposite of the ln function. So I can rewrite that expression or that term as ln e to the 2. So just to really stress this, that 2 is the same as this whole expression. And the reason we did this is so we can condense these, we can put them together. So let's keep going. On the left side, I'm just going to rewrite. And on the right side, we have that expression. Okay, so now the whole goal is to put those two things together on the right. Um, here we have a half. I can take that and move that up here using the law of logs. So we get ln 2 to the half minus ln e squared. And that is equal to ln root x. I'm just rewriting. All right. ln root x is equal to. Now I can condense those two things. And remember the law of logs, if you subtract, you can divide. So that means ln, that becomes ln 2 to the half over e squared. All right. Now, there is an ln right here. There is an ln right here. We're not canceling them out, but they're the same exact thing, which means that whatever comes afterwards in green here, they are the same things as well. So we can disregard that ln and just write what comes after the ln, which is root x is equal to 2 to the half, which is just square root 2 over e squared. Our final step here, if we want x alone, is to do the opposite of square rooting x, which is squaring x. So we're going to square that whole expression, and we end up getting that x is equal to net root squared, sorry, root 2 squared is just 2 over e squared to the second power is e to the fourth. And that is our final answer. We have solved for x. And that's that full IB question. Hopefully that helped.